Hello, in this video we're, we're going to look at transformations of random variables and specifically discrete uh, random variables. This is the beginning of a new series on transformations of random variables. We're going to look at discrete, maybe the CDF technique, the change variables. We're going to do it in the multivariate setting. And so this is the first uh, video in this series. I'm going to uh, try to give lots of examples illustrating each of these points and at the end do another 10, 15, 20 more examples illustrating each of these points. Okay, but first I have to start off with, you know, sort of on a, a general or a theoretic base. This, this picture is what is happening. Okay, so this here is our experiment. So for example, uh, we roll a die and uh, the outcomes are observe the number of dots on the top part of the die, okay, which inherently is not a number. It's just we're observing the number of dots on a, the, the top part of a die after a random roll, okay. And so a random variable takes our event space and maps it to a real number or a subset of the real number line. And then there's some sigma fields associated with that, and that's basically how to group these events together into what's called events. Uh, there's a probability measure on, on this space. In this case, it's the discrete probability measure. Each of the six different outcomes has a probability of one sixth, assuming that we're going to stick with the roll, the die rolling experiment. Um, so X is a random variable that maps these events to numbers over here. So these numbers in this space are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now um, what we're going to do past this is we're going to forget about this piece and just think about it here. Think about the random variable space and then a mapping or a function of that random variable. And um, but really it all starts here. Okay, so now we we have a function called h of x. Uh, let's call it y. And so this this space is a uh, um, we generically will call it S. This will generically we'll call T. So we want to find the probability of Y. But really, um, what was the probability of that X mapping to Y? And then that's ultimately the probability of Y, whether in the discrete case or the continuous case, multivariate case. But this is really in, thought of in terms of a pre-image, okay? Going from here to here is a function. So one value here goes to one value here. Um, now the pre-image doesn't have to be a function. So, so if we have a set B, what are the X's over here that are mapped to this set B with the function H? And then the pre-image, call it minus H, you know, H inverse of B, is all the X's here that were mapped to that, okay? So let's, uh, this, this example here is, uh, let's say this set here is one, three, and five, and uh, set this function is all odd. So we wanna find the probability of an odd roll. Well, so we need, a, we need to look at the pre-image of B, which finds all the X's that are mapped to this one event, okay, uh, rolling odd. Now the probability of this event is really just a probability of, of obtaining these events here, okay? And so the next uh, two statements, you have to think of it in terms of this, okay? So let's, have a, let's let x be a random variable, and uh, we have a mapping that goes from the real line to the real line. Could be subsets of the real line, or it could say from s to t, uh, where this is S and this is T, um, and, and be measurable. And measurable is one of those things that says um, sets in here map to sets in here and vice versa. And that's what this Borel sigma field does, and I'm not going to go into it, or this uh, U, which is a sigma field in our original space. We're just going to say it's measurable. And I have, a, I have a series on probability measure if you want to look, look deeper into that. Uh, some people get around with saying that it's a continuous mapping and continuous functions are measurable, so that's okay. But ultimately it needs to be measurable. 
Okay, then y, which is a function of x, is a random variable. Now, given the distribution of x, which we're going to call p of x, we want to find the distribution of y, called p of y. And note that if y is going to be in our set b, that means that the function, you know, functions of x that go to b, you know, this, this is the same thing. But really, we need to find, that means all the x's that go into the pre-image of b. And so if we want to find this probability, it says we need to find all the x's that are mapped to this set and then find their probabilities, and then that's the probability of this event. Um, so there's a theorem that says for all uh, sets in the Borel sigma field, so that's all these b's, to find the probability of y and b, that's equal to the probability of x and a, where a is the pre-image of b. Okay, so that, we're, we're going to break it down into even simpler terms, but I feel like I need to cover that initially. Okay, so, uh, so transformations, um, let x be discrete, random variable, taking on values, say, x, j, and let y be a function of your uh, of x taking on values yj uh, and then from the theorem if we let b be one element called y then a is the pre-image of b and it says all the x's that are mapped to y okay so that says that the the uh, the distribution of y or you know which is the probability of y in b which is just little ij that's the probability um, of, of being in B, which is the probability of X being in A, which is the probability of all those X and A summed up, where X is a probability. Okay, so now let's, let's look at that in some examples here. So if we let X take on values uh, in minus N to minus 1 to 1 to N, each with probability 1 over 2 N, and we let X equal, or Y equal X squared. We want to find the distribution of y. Um, so y can take on the values 1, 4, 9, 16, all the way up to n squared. And so to find the probability that y equals 1, we need to find all the x's that are mapped to 1, which are minus 1 and 1. And the sum of those probabilities is are each 1 over 2n that says this is 1 over n. In the same way with 4, to find the probability that y is 4, we need to find all the x's that are mapped to 4, which is minus 2 and 2, find their probabilities, which, you know, added together is 1 over n. And we do that for each possibility of y, okay? Um, and that's how you find the distribution of y in the discrete case. Um, more maybe from a, a set theory standpoint, if we let b be the the set Y, and then A is the pre-image of B, which says, um, you know, it's the X, X squares that equal Y, which is the same of, as the X's that equal the square root of Y, plus or minus, okay? So the probability that cap Y is little y is the probability that Y is in set B, which is just this element, which is the probability that X is in A, which means that it's this. So it's a probability that x is equal to the square root of y plus the probability that x is equal to minus the square root of y. And each of those are 1 over 2n, which is 1 over n. And that's what we also set up here. Okay, so let's go through another example. So here, if we let x be Poisson, we have the transformation y is equal to uh, x squared plus 2x minus 3, okay? So this, this function is here, okay? And it goes up forever. But notice that x is positive. So we're only dealing with this piece of the function. So 1x goes to 1y. So somehow if this was, was moved over, then it would be possible that 1x goes to two different y's, but in this case it doesn't, okay? So to find the, pro the, the distribution of y, which y 
you know, X takes on 0, 1, 2, 3, and then you plug those in to find what values Y takes. So if you plug in 0, then you get minus 3, you plug in 1, you get 0, you plug in 2, you get 5, and etc. So, um, the probability that Y equals minus 3 is what X is mapped to that, and that's 0. So we need to find the probability of 0. Well, since X is a Poisson, you just plug it into the Poisson distribution and you get e to the minus lambda. Now to find the probability that y is 0 is we need to find the x's that are mapped to 0, which is 1. Find the probability of 1, and since x is Poisson, it's this. Uh, probability that y is 5, we need to find the values of x that are mapped to 5. Find its probability that x is 2, which is this, because it's a Poisson, and etc. Now, this doesn't give us a general formula if we just list it out like this. And we'd have to go, you know, from here to infinity. So using a more of a set theoretic standpoint, then we can generate a formula. So if we let B be, be Y. So remember, B is the set that's in Y, you know, that's mapped from X to, to Y, you know, from A to B. And A is all the X's that are mapped to B. And, and so we need to find this set here. So, so this is the relationship. And then we need to find the X that makes this possible. Well, if we subtract Y over, we get this equation, which is a quadratic equation. And we can solve that. And we get X is equal to this right here. Well, um, so there's two possibilities. But... Since x is always positive, we can't, we're, the negative piece of this doesn't work because it makes x negative. So we have to take the top part, the minus 1 plus the square root of y plus 4. So these are the x's that make this possible. So the, the set A is this, okay? So that's what this is. A is, is this set. So if B is y, the preimage is this. Now, to find the probability of being in B, which is just this value Y, that's the probability of Y is little y, which is the probability that X is in the preimage of Y, which says that X is in A, and then we just determined A, right? So if X is in this and X is Poisson, then we know the formula. We plug in this into the Poisson distribution, which is this, okay? Well, we're done. That's it. That's the distribution of y. And so as a quick example, if we say y, probably of y equal to 5, then we plug in y into our formula, stick it here and here, then this reduces down to this, and that's it. But that's exactly what, and this is the same that probably the x is 2. And that's what we set up here. It's the same probability. But now we have a general formula. Well, that's all I have for today on discrete uh, transformations. Uh, next video will be on using what's called the cumulative distribution func te technique to find transformations of random variables. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.